If you're a longtime fan of German watchmaker Elange und Zona, then this watch has been a long time coming. Famous for the fit and finish of their timepieces, Lange is considered a pretty formal brand, and in the past it's made its watches almost exclusively in precious metals. For years now, however, fans of the brand have been hoping for something a little bit less buttoned up, a little more versatile. In a word, something in steel. Enter the Lange & Sona Odysseus, the first ever steel watch from the company with their first ever steel bracelet to boot. But did Lange & Sona fans really get what they had been wishing for? Let's take a closer look at what it's like to experience the Langenzona Odysseus for a week on the wrist. Basically, for its entire history since the brand came back in 1994, Langenzona has made watches like this. This is a very early production Langenzona Lange 1. Uh, it has a solid case back, interestingly enough. And this is what people have over the years been conditioned to expect from Langenzona, something extremely solidly built, obviously very high quality, but certainly not the kind of watch that you would put on your wrist on a brisk fall day to go out and rake the leaves. In fact, Lange has, over its history, produced a number of steel watches, but these examples are exceedingly rare. They were never formally offered in Lange's catalog, and when they come up for sale at auction, they fetch huge results, when they come up at all. Add to this scarcity the fact that the demand for luxury steel sports watches in general is higher now than I've ever seen it, and it's easy to see how the levels of anticipation expectation, and scrutiny around this release would be sky high. Suffice it to say, the first reaction to the Odysseus was mixed. Press photos create a definite first impression, but it's not necessarily always an accurate one. They lack the ability to show the watch in real depth, to show its proportions in a real-life context, perhaps most importantly to show what it feels like in the metal, and especially once you have it on the wrist. Before we get into expectations versus reality, however, Let's take a look at the basics. The case and bracelet of the Odysseus are both, of course, in stainless steel. The case is 40.5 by 11.1 millimeters with 120 meters water resistance, and there's a screw down crown, which is not necessarily de rigueur on a stainless steel luxury sports watch, but certainly a nice thing to have. There's a distinctive big day and big date display. These are both very, very strongly associated with Langenzona, of course, and were part of the company's design DNA from the very beginning. Long and Sona has also chosen to use a second subdial rather than a center seconds. The steel bracelet has five links per row and has a combination of brushed surfaces with beveled and polished flanks. It's an integrated design, but not what we usually think of as an integrated bracelet, as it could be swapped out for a conventional strap. The Odysseus has a new movement. This is the caliber L1151.1 Datamatic. The new movement winds in one direction with a platinum oscillating mass. There's a free-sprung adjustable mass balance, a full balance bridge, hand engrave, and there's a mechanism for fine adjustment of beat error. The movement is finished to the same high standard as other Lange movements and has a 50-hour power reserve. Now, to me, one of the most fascinating things about the Lange Zone Odysseus is that it creates a certain impression when you see the press photographs, and uh, it creates another impression when you actually have the watch in your hand and when you actually put it on the wrist. And I have to admit, when I first saw the press release images, I was a little concerned. There were elements of the design that, at least based on the press photos, didn't seem to harmonize all that well. The five-link bracelet felt a little dated. The blue dial felt as if it were a little bit derivative of other luxury steel sports watches, honestly. It was unclear to me how well the pushers that control the day and date quick set worked with the overall design. And uh, I wasn't sure about the use of a sub-second style on a sports watch. I have to admit I was left scratching my head. But then the watch arrived in the office, and to have this watch actually in your hands in the metal makes all the difference. The bracelet, which seemed heavy in a way that might overwhelm the case, was actually incredibly well balanced. It had a reassuring heft that felt very well distributed around the wrist. The beveled surfaces on the five-link bracelet are beautifully executed. The way the links catch the light clearly communicates the luxury intentions of the watch. The slightly, and I think deliberately, Teutonic design of the seconds subdial plays off the slightly old-fashioned look of the bracelet in a really nice way. I think that this is an element that actually helps keep the watch grounded in the world of Langenzona, even though, of course, it's a major departure for them as well. The beveling on the pushers works very well with that of the bracelet, and the bracelet flows nicely and smoothly into the case and then the pushers. There's a one beautiful line that sort of flows through all of those elements, kind of like the character lines on the side of a beautifully designed car. 
I suppose it won't come as much of a surprise after all this to hear that uh, having the watch on the wrist for a week really created a very different impression than I had from um, the initial press release coverage. That doesn't always happen. It does happen sometimes that um, you know your first impressions are correct, but in this case, there's so much going on with the watch in terms of its uh, general sense of heft, its three-dimensionality, the way that different aspects of the design speak to each other, that I found myself really enjoying it more and more as the week went on. I really warmed up to it, and it started to feel like it really belonged in the Langenzona family of watches. Now, what do we really mean when we say a watch does or does not fit in with the overall design language, uh, you could call it the overall vibe of a particular brand. You know, we have a general sense of what we expect from a watch from IWC, for instance. We have a general sense of what we expect from Langenzona. What we expect from Langenzona, honestly, is a watch much more like this than like the Odysseus. So if something is a significant departure from the design language that we associate for a brand, I think that that creates a little bit of a disconnect. It makes us uh, feel like we've seen maybe a new aspect of an old friend that we didn't necessarily suspect was there. But maybe that's okay. Going off on its own with the Odysseus for me was a chance to certainly see aspects of it both that connected with and that were a departure from what Langenzona usually does. And as an extension of Langenzona's design language, I think it's going to be really cool to see where they go with it next.